It's as if Microsoft's head of hardware Panos Panay somehow got a hold of the shrink ray from um, Honey I Shrunk the Kids and decided to skip the kids part and just shrink the Surface Pro. There are a handful of notable differences. The edges of the Go are just a touch more rounded than those found on the Surface Pro. There's also, mercifully, a USB-C port. The Surface Pro still comes with a full-size USB port, which, at this point, is blasphemous. Especially, when you're buying a device that starts at $799. Outside of that, the Surface Go sports the same vibrant pixel sense display found on the Surface Pro, meaning you'll get brilliant colors and sharp features out off the 10-inch panel. In other words, downsizing the Surface doesn't mean you're getting a subpar visual experience. But using Windows in desktop mode on a 10-inch tablet can also be a pain. For example, my father, who doesn't have the best vision, would have trouble viewing text on the slate. It's not something most people will run into, but it's definitely worth taking into account. In fact, I found the slate to be the perfect size for watching movies on the bus and in the car. It's also just about the right size to prop up on my belly while catching up on The Bachelorette in bed. As far as usability, though, the Surface Go's keyboard is on a PAR with most Surface keyboards. There's a good amount of key travel and the angle at which it sits when magnetically connected to the Surface is pleasant. But there's a learning curve when it comes to typing on this pint-size puppy. With only so much room inside to pack a processor, storage, and RAM, Microsoft couldn't pack the latest and greatest processor into the Surface Go. Instead, the tech giant equipped the small slate with an Intel Pentium Gold processor. That's not going to give you the kind of performance you'd expect out of a Core i5, or even Core i3 processor. That's not to say that the Go crawls. On the contrary, I was able to have multiple tabs open in Microsoft's Edge browser, while running Spotify, streaming Netflix and chatting on Slack without running into a problem. That said, don't expect to play any games on this thing outside of basic tablet games. The process takes less than 5 minutes and doesn't even require a system restart. I didn't even notice the change over, and I was staring at the Go the whole time. But Google's Chrome is a resource hog. When I went back to browsing with several tabs open, while streaming Spotify and Netflix and chatting on Slack, I began to notice performance issues with the Go. Specifically, websites, especially image-heavy sites like and our own began to load more slowly. It's important to note that my test machine came with 8 GB of RAM, which is an upgrade from the base model of the Go, which starts at $399. That upgrade will cost you, though, as the 8GB model starts at $549, plus the extra $99 for the base keyboard. I wouldn't recommend that you purchase the Surface Go as your primary device, though. This is a machine meant for use as a secondary PC you can quickly get work done on and then go back to watching Hulu, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. Disclosure the writer's spouse works for a public relations agency that contracts with Microsoft's Xbox division. More from Dan, email Daniel Howley at Dowley at, follow him on Twitter at, at Daniel Howley. Follow News Pulse Finance on Facebook, Twitter, INSTagram, and LinkedIn.